What's up everybody? So a few months ago, actually up to a year ago, I made a video talking about high speed sync. I made a video talking about shooting with NDs on location with off camera flash. And in this video, we're gonna take a look and see which is better shooting with high speed sync or shooting with ND filters. We're gonna take a look, we're gonna build this up shot by shot. Let's get started. All right, everybody, my name is Miguel Quiles and welcome to the channel. I'm here joined by Caitlin. If you watched my other videos on this topic, then she looks super familiar because it's the same model. We're back at it again uh, on a different day. End of the day, it's really hot and sticky. It was raining all day long. So if you see me glistening today, it's because it's really, really, really hot outside. But uh, it's all good. I'm doing this for you because I want you to know what the differences are between shooting high speed sync and ND filters. All right, so the lights that we're gonna be using for this is very simple. I've got the Westcott FJ400. I've got it going through the Westcott uh, Manny Ortiz Beauty Dish Switch. Great modifier, especially for shooting on location like this. It's gonna serve us just well. So one simple light to light all of these shots. The trick is, what we wanna do is, I have a 50 millimeter f1.2 lens, and naturally, I wanna shoot wide open. I wanna shoot at f1.2, but I also wanna pair it up with a flash. So. There's some challenges with that. And so I'm gonna show you what the challenges are as we build up these shots. You're gonna see kind of the, the issues that we run into. Forgive the cars in the background, by the way, because we are in a parking lot. Um, but we're gonna build this thing up. So I'm gonna take the first shot, F1.2. I'm gonna shoot this with the normal flash sync. So if you don't know what this means, I'm gonna link in the cards above that first video talking about uh, flash sync on these cameras. But I'm gonna be at 1 250th, the 1 200th of a second for shutter speed f1.2 and ISO 100. I'm gonna put my light at a 1.0. That is the lowest power level that this light will produce. And we're gonna take a shot. We'll see what we end up with. All right, cool. So right there is good. Very nice. Perfect. All right, so just to show you, this is, uh, F1.2, and I'll put this up on the screen so you can see what this looks like. 1 200th of a second, ISO 100. This is the normal uh, flash sync. And as you can see at F1.2, it looks nice. It's not a, a, a bad shot. The challenge for me here is that to my eyes, and I don't know if this is showing up in the video, but to my eyes, the sky is not blown out. We're probably after sundown or pretty close to sundown. Um, so we do have some kind of interesting clouds. It's not the most interesting clouds, but of course, when you go out to shoot a tutorial, the skies get goofy on you. Uh, but it's good enough for the purposes of the video. It doesn't look like what we're seeing in camera. In camera, it's totally blown out. So in order for me to darken this image, I have a few options. I could shoot in high speed sync and I could bring my shutter speed up or I could put on an ND filter to darken the overall exposure. Then I'm gonna use the flash to light Caitlin. So, We'll start off with ND filters, we'll see how that looks, and then we'll switch over to high-speed sync. Okay, so I have put on a um, three to seven stop ND filter. This one is made by Haida or Haida, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, um, but a really nice ND filter. It's got a circular polarizer built into it as well, which is really nice on occasion. Uh, but what's really cool about this is I could adjust the amount of ND just by twisting this little dial here. Uh, so we'll get it looking just right. I'm gonna turn off my flash because I wanna see what the ambient exposure looks like before I actually incorporate my flash. So right now, F1.2, again, uh, I'm actually bringing my shutter speed down to 1 25th of a second so I can uh, play around a little bit with this ND look that we have going on. So if I'm at, let's say, uh, let's see where we're at. So this is about three stops on the ND filter. You see that the sky is starting to come in. It's not blown out anymore. Um, but it, obviously, Caitlin is really dark. Uh, so this is at f1.2, 1 125th, ISO 100. So now that I have that base level exposure looking good, all I need to do is turn on my light to light Caitlin. So let's do that. And I'm gonna move my light, position this a little bit differently. So we'll put that here. And so now let's see what we get. So I'm at 1.0. And you can see it's not doing very much. So we're gonna bring this light up in power. How much we bring it up, you know, it's all to taste. Watch those other videos. I've got another video as well on uh, getting the correct exposure levels 
but to my eyes, that was still a little dark. Let's go to 4.7. Yeah, so at 4.7, that's looking really nice. So again, now this is uh, with an ND filter. Looks really nice. Of course, we just had a light come on, but that's okay. So here it's really nice because with the ND filter, we can bring some of that drama back in the sky. Looks really beautiful. And the nice thing about using the ND filter is that, or one of the advantages is that you don't have to go into high speed sync. So obviously the FJ400, it's an advanced light. It does have high speed sync, does have uh, TTL. So you can use those features, but let's say if you have some really old school flash that literally just pulses light, the ND filter might be a good option because you can get that fast aperture, but not uh, have to have such an advanced light like you have here with the FJ400. But because we have it, we're gonna switch over to high speed sync and we'll see how that works. Okay, so first we did the ND filters. Now we're gonna shoot high speed sync. Let me show you how you build this thing up here. So right now we're at F1.2. Again, that's our target aperture for these shots. Uh, I'm at ISO 100 and I was at one 1 25th of a second. Now the challenge is at these settings right now, if I was to bring my power level and I'm gonna turn my remote back on. So I got my power level at 1.0. And uh, again, that was that base shot where the uh, background is really dark. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up our shutter speed. I'm actually gonna turn this back off. And our shutter speed now is just gonna darken the image. So maybe something around 1 1250 brings us that nice uh, rich color. We're seeing the blues, we're seeing the oranges in the background. This is what the shot looks like without a flash. And then of course now all we have to do is turn this on, but because we're at one over 1250 for our shutter speed, that requires us to be at high speed sync. So you have to have a flash and you have to have a trigger that is both compatible with high speed sync, which in this case, the FJ X2M from Westcott is capable and also your FJ400 is compatible with high speed sync. So that allows us to surpass that one 200th of a second, which is a uh, limitation to most digital cameras. And now we can go way beyond. We can go up to one 8,000th of a second, which is not necessary because we're running out of light. So one 1250th of a second here, we'll fire off this first shot. And uh, you could see that the background actually, if we take that again, it's still not with that like deep rich color. So we're just gonna bring up, actually it went to one, over 250, so there was the catch. So we're gonna change our sync to high speed sync. Now we're at one over 1250. And now you see that you're getting that nice color, but uh, we'll take one more here. You can see that Caitlin is kind of dark, so that's not a problem. We're at 1.0. We have plenty of room to uh, come up here on the power. So let's try 2.0. Okay, we're getting better. Try this again. Let's go to 3.5. Okay, 3.5 is looking better. I might even just bring it to like 3.8 just to see. Hmm. Let's go up a little more. So right at around 4.1 for these shots, it's looking really nice. So we're gonna take some shots here with the uh, high speed sync feature turned on. We'll see how these look. Good. All right, so you got to see two different options here. In my last videos, I did just straight up high speed sync. I did just straight up ND filters. And in this video, we put one up against the other. So again, there's a bunch of different ways to be able to do this. It really all just depends on what your goal is, uh, what your, your, your limitations might be with each one. Specifically with shooting with high speed sync, the kind of big limitation is gonna be that if you're shooting in the daytime, it is gonna reduce the power output of the light. We didn't run into that problem now because we're shooting at the end of the day. It's hot, it's muggy. There's cars in the parking lot still. It's just a long day, but high speed sync got the job done on the tail end of the day. But if we were shooting at like midday, um, the output of the light is not gonna be as good. So in that situation, if I was photographing somebody midday, I would probably go with uh, shooting with an ND filter because I could shoot the full spectrum of power that the light offers 
and I could basically just dial in the ambient light using the ND filter. I don't have to worry about doing it with the shutter speed. So pretty easy, right? Let me know in the comments section, which do you prefer shooting with an ND or shooting with high speed sync? For me personally, I use both for different occasions, but I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. If you missed those videos uh, talking about high speed sync and ND, I'm gonna put them here on the screen for you to check out. Also make sure before you head out to head over to Caitlin's Instagram, give her a follow, show some love. She's been in all the videos. She's done a great job. We'll see you in the next one.